Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord. The Holy Scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through His Spirit, also known as the Holy Ghost, and otherwise known as the Spirit of Truth. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in Jesus' name. Because truly without him, we can't do nothing. We don't exist. So this is how we're going to start opening up this Bible program. We're going to open up the Bible program with scriptures that's praising the Lord and that declare his gloriousness and his righteousness. Let's look at this. We're going to start this in uh, Revelation 7. And we're going to take a look at what the angels that's standing around the throne of God is saying and doing. Because the Lord, he loved when we praise him. And, and honestly, there's nothing like the Lord Jesus Christ and his father. Nothing. I love how God be operating. And I thank him for giving me the opportunity to present the word to his sheep. So let's look at this. Revelation 7. And let's take a look at verse 11, because we this is how we're going to open up this program from now on. This is what the Lord has been showing me. We're going to open up this program with Bible scriptures that's praising and honoring the Lord. So let's look at this, because it's all about him. He must increase. We must decrease because we ain't nothing but human beings. Look at this. It said, and all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worship God. What were they saying? Saying, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. That's right. So all of these things are attributes that's attributed to God. So we got to praise him. So with that being said, this is what we're going to deal with today. We're going to take a look at how Sin is the downfall of any nation. I don't care what nation you are. Sin, it, if you committing sin, that's going to be the downfall of that nation. So let's take a look at this. Let's go over here to uh, Hebrews 13. And we read this quite often on this channel because we want to stay reminded that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He does not change. There has never been a moment in history where wickedness just continued to go on and god didn't do nothing about it so when we read these things in the bible these events that actually took place we can be reminded that god is the same yesterday today and forever but let's take a look at this hebrews 13 and 8 jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever jesus christ don't change so if wickedness was wicked back in the day thousands of years ago it's still the same it's the same today he still feels the same about it. He is angry with the wicked every day. He said that over in Psalms 11. Let me just go and show you that as well. I'm going to turn in this other Bible to that. Psalms 11, because the Lord, he does not change. And just because the Lord is not executing judgment right away, that don't mean he's not going to pay you. So look at this. Let me just go over here. Uh, uh, Psalms is this psalm 7 or psalms 11 let me take a look let me turn over here real quick um oh yeah psalm 7 and 11 psalm 7 and 11 give me one second let me get this phone straight up here okay it said god judges the righteous and god is angry with the wicked every day every day god is upset with the wicked so what do we need to do Repent from my wicked ways. Turn back to him because he the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Let's go and look at something else. Give me a second while I get this phone straight. Ah, here we go. Okay, let's go and look at this. Let's go to, uh, what was I going? Psalms. Let's go in Psalms 33. Let's go and see what the Lord is doing. Because the Lord is in heaven beholding all the sons of men. And I love how the Lord operate because he said there is not a sparrow that hit the ground that your heavenly father don't know about god know everything that's going on so you gotta know he watching us let's take a look at this it said this is psalms 33 and 12 blessed is the nation whose god is the lord and the people whom he have chosen for his own inheritance israel is a blessed people although it seems as if you know god has done us away or threw us away but really the Lord is having mercy on us. 
He's having mercy on us and he'll never break the covenant that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He always going to preserve us. Although our people have suffered a tremendous amount of hostility from everybody else. Pain and suffering. But that was because our people transgressed against God. And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Which we're going to take a look at in this lesson. Because the thing is, any nation that's built off of sin, it will come to nothing. God will level it. He's going to bring it down to the ground. Look at this. What is the Lord doing? The Lord looking from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. So he watching every last one of us, whether or not you know it or not. He's watching us. And some of us, he didn't actually shown us. Hey, look, I see you. I see exactly what you're doing. And that's scary. And that and that's what this is what really drives me to serve the Lord, knowing that he's there, that he exists and that he he's watching us. He gave us a set of instructions to follow. And we as human beings have to do exactly what he said, how he said it. So, look, he said. From the place of his habitation, which is heaven, he looked upon all the inhabitants of the earth. God is watching every last one of us. And like the lesson we did yesterday, the Lord is judging us according to what's on our heart. So we got to keep that in mind because everything that we do, God is going to judge us. Let's take a look at this. So let's go over here because the Lord, he let us know over here in Jeremiah 23 or Jeremiah 9 and 20, 23 <clears throat> that God, he execute righteousness and judgment in the earth. Where do we live at? In the earth. Watch this. Jeremiah 9 and 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. So don't be puffed up and arrogant about how much wisdom you got or how strong you are, how valiant of a man you are. That don't have nothing to do with nothing. What, what you need to be glorying in is this right here, which is what Jeremiah about to let us know. He said, let us... Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But what are we supposed to glory in? But let him that glory of glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So for those of us that understand and know who God is, that's that's our glory. That's what we're supposed to be happy about. That's what we're supposed to make our boast in. Knowing and understanding the Lord. He said that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. So the Lord execute these things in the earth. He's calling all of the shots in heaven and in earth. He got everything under control. Look at this. He said, for in these things, I delight, saith the Lord. He said, that's what he delight in. Matter of fact, in another place, watch this. Let me show you something else. Because the Lord, he, he controlling everything. Give me one second. One second. Let's go over here and look at something else. Let's go over here and see something else. Uh, oh, watch this. Isaiah 45. Isaiah, Isaiah 45. Let's take a look at verse, verse 5. He said, I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Ain't no other God beside the true and living God. He said that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no other God beside the true and living God that's sitting in heaven. He said, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Guess what? The Lord is the one that does these things. He is the one that creates peace. And creates evil as well. So, man, we don't we don't want to cross this God. Watch this. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and look at. Uh, hmm. Give me one second. I'm trying to see. I'm Rick. I'm looking for something. Um. Give me one second. I'm looking for something. Well, you know what? Let's go and um, let's go and see something over here. All right, let's go and look at something else. Uh, I want to make sure I got these history references uh, on board right now. So let's go and take a look at this. De Deuteronomy four. Deuteronomy four, and we're gonna have a look at this right here. Deuteronomy four. 
Because we went over this not too long ago, but we want to be reminded of this. Let's go and take a look at this. Because the Lord, he the one that bring judgment on an evil nation. And also on an individual as well. So let's take a look at this. Deuteronomy 4. Let's have a look at verses 6 through 8. It said, keep therefore and do them the word of God, his commandments. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the children of Israel had laws and statutes and commandments given by God that we had to live by and that we still have to live by. And when you go outside of what God is telling you, he'll bring evil on you. Just like over here in the United States of America and all across the world, we got these people that want to be homosexual. They they pushing this off on the kids. They pushing it off on everybody. They want everybody to accept this. But they have not clearly understood that the Lord is the one who bring judgment down on you for doing those types of things. You out here murdering, shedding blood, doing things contrary to the Lord. The Lord will get you for that. He will judge us. That's why we got to cut it off right now while we still got the time. So he said, for what nation is there so great who have God so nigh to them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Man, this is what everybody's supposed to be living by. This is this right here is the Constitution of the kingdom of heaven that every man is supposed to be living by. And when I say man, I mean mankind, the species. Let's go and look at something else. So we got laws and statutes that we're supposed to live by. Let's go over here. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. And let's take a look at verse uh, 24. It said, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God. So the Lord, he gave the children of Israel a set of laws, which was his laws, to tell and share with everybody else. But because we dropped the ball, now we being oppressed by the stranger. Everybody is doing us wrong because we, are, we did God wrong. We disobeyed him. We didn't live up to what we were supposed to be doing. So therefore, he poured out judgment on us. So look, it said, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God. For our good always for us, So it's for our good What God is telling us That he might preserve us alive As it is this day And it shall be our righteousness So when the Lord was giving out The law to Moses The law was their righteousness And we're going to find out What our righteousness is today Which is the faith in the blood of Jesus Christ Coupled with being obedient to his commandments So this ain't changed neither So he said for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the lord our god as he has commanded us i opened up this lesson the sep the second scripture that we read was hebrews 13 and 8 where jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever he don't change and he also said i am my father i one there's two in the godhead but jesus christ is the spokesman for the word well he the spokesman for the godhead he the one that's speaking on god's behalf he the one that's speaking on the father's behalf let's go and take a look at something else because he just mentioned our the uh the, the commandments was our righteousness right but jeremiah prophesied about somebody else who was gonna come which was jesus christ and he was gonna be our righteousness so let's go and take a look at this and once again, let's keep in mind, this lesson is dealing with sin is the downfall of any nation. We just laying a foundation for what this lesson is going to be about. So let's take a look at this. Behold, Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper. This is talking about Jesus. Because uh, Jesus came through David's lineage. So let's see what else he said. He said, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Where is the Lord going to do this at? Right here in the earth where we living at. He said, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Who is this talking about? 
This is none other than Jesus Christ. Let's go and take a look at this uh, 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 over here in Romans. Romans 3. Let's go to Romans 3. We just want to make sure we know what and who we talking about. Romans 3. Because the Lord is our righteousness. <clears throat> so if you want to be considered righteous, we got to trust in Jesus Christ. Look at this. Even the Romans 3 and 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. So he's our righteousness. So we got to come away from all of these things that's contrary to God. Let's go and look at Amos 3. Let's see what he went and told Israel. Let's go over here to Amos 3. Let's go to Amos 3 and let's take a look at verse 1. Because when the Lord was giving the commandments... On Mount Sinai, he was talking to our people. And yes, it was a mixed multitude there with them as well. So this is universal. This is for everybody. Watch this. Look at this. And as a matter of fact, earlier, this is what I was looking for too. Uh, uh, Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in a city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord have not done it? The Lord can send evil upon you for some sins that you committed. That you didn't repent from. We're going to take a look. Let's see what that, let's see what this is saying. Praise God for his understanding. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel. Talking about us, the so-called African American. Or the black man that been scattered out of his homeland all across the four corners of the earth. We know who we talking about. The ones who they call nigger and coon. Him. This is who he talking about. Because those are bywords and proverbs that was poured out on us because we disobeyed what God said. And he said that would be a sign upon us forever. When you get a chance, go back and look at Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. All right. So let's see. He said against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He entered into a covenant with the children of Israel. He made known unto our people the laws, statutes, and commandments, the things that was, he was really sharing his mind with us. Because when we read about what thus said the Lord, he's given us how he acts. He's given us insight on what he is expecting from us. The law is the extension of God's characteristics. And he's showing us this is what we need to live by. But if you go against that, you're going to get smashed. If you don't repent, you're going to get crushed. Because God got a time where everybody going to be judged. And we don't want to be tossed in that fire, burning forever. So let's see. He said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, will I punish you for all your iniquities. He said, I'm going to get you for everything that you did. Because you know better. You know better. Just like the scribes and Pharisees and the chief priests that was denying Jesus Christ. He said, your sin remain. Therefore, you know, you ain't got no cloak for your skin. It ain't no excuse because you know better. So let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here to. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, 18. That's when he was talking about uh, him, God being a potter and us being a clay. In other words, the Lord is in control. He can mold us and fashion us into who he want us to be. So watch this. Let's go to Jeremiah 18 let's take a look at verse 7 let's get into this uh, uh nation getting crushed now let's get into this jeremiah 18 and 7 he said at what instant i shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it so the lord said at whatever time that i i speak to you concerning the kingdom to pluck it up and to pull it down and to destroy it he said if that nation Against whom I have pronounced, turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. That's why the Lord sent Jonah over into Nineveh, and he had Jonah preaching to the Ninevites. Although they weren't Israel, the Lord, he's fair. He's a just God. There ain't no respect to persons with the Lord. So what wound up happening over there in Nineveh, they repented. At the preaching of Jonah. And that was acceptable because what they were doing in Nineveh, they were wicked in Nineveh. And what we're going to find out later on is the things that they were doing in there. They were shedding blood. They was doing all kind of stuff. So he said, if that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil 
I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. So God is merciful. So he's giving all of us enough time to get it right and to do things that's pleasing to him before he pour out judgment. So look at what else he said. And at what instant I shall speak concerning the nation and concerning the kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good that I of the good wherewith I said I will benefit them. So if you continue in sin and you ain't doing what thus said the Lord, he said he'll pull you down. He'll repent of the good where he thought he was going to do you good. He'll, he'll turn it to evil. Let's see what else he said. Now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, thus saith the Lord, behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now, everyone from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. But what did they do? They didn't. It said, and they said, there is no hope. But we will walk after our own devices and we will every one do the imagination of his evil heart. They said, man, man look, we're going to do whatever we want to do. No, you, you got to do what thus said the Lord. You can't do whatever you want to do. That's the reason why we scattered into captivity right now. And yeah, we still in captivity. Let's skip down to verse 15. He said, because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to vanity. And they have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths. What's the ancient paths? Walking in the law of the Lord, being obedient unto his voice. He said to walk in paths in a way not cast up, to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head. See, you're going to be a shame and a reproach. Because you sinned against God because you did not do that which was pleasing to the Lord. So therefore, he said, when people see you, they're going to be ashamed at you. You ever been playing basketball and you you get the fast break and you miss the dunk or you miss the wide open layup? And it's the game point. Man, people be upset and wagging their head like, man, that's a shame. Well, that's the same thing that happened with the children of Israel. Let's see what else they what else did they do? They got scattered. He said, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. If God turned his back on you, when you are in trouble, you ain't got no help. You're going to get destroyed. That's why he said, I turn them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. We don't want the Lord to turn his back on us in a day of our trouble because we have to listen to him. And in other words, what God is saying if you're not listening to me, why should I listen to you? And we could we could apply that to our personal lives. Somebody always wants you to listen to them. Why should I listen to you when you ain't listening to me? The Lord said, I love them, those that love me. Over in, what was that, uh, uh, Proverbs 8 and 17? So, you know, when you get a chance, let me just say, let me go over here. And say, Proverbs 8 and 17. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. God loves those that love him. So if you ain't listening to him, why should he listen to you? Let's go and take a look at this. Let's go and look at something else. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. And let's have a look over here at verse 30. Let's see this real quick. Ezekiel 18 and verse 30. This is why it's important for us to repent from sin because... Whoever you are, no matter what's going on, sin can be your iniquity and your downfall. Okay, so let's go and take a look at something over here. Let me see this real quick. Give me one, one second. Okay, so let's let's go over here. It said, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgression transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So the Lord want us to repent because if you don't repent, remember how the Lord sent the angel in the way to uh, be with the children of Israel. As a matter of fact, let's just go and take a look at that real quick. 
Because the Lord, if he fight against you, you can't win. Let me just show you this. Look at what he look, look at what he did. Isaiah 63 and 8. For he says, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. So when the Lord had child, the children of Israel, when he was watching over us, when he first entered into a covenant with us, he was pleased with us. He said, Man, he, he gonna be our savior. But what happened? He said, in all their affliction, he was afflicted. So God felt what we was feeling. Why you think when uh 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 he sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel out of the hand of Pharaoh. Why do you think he did that? Because he was feeling a pain. He was seeing the affliction that his people was going through in Egypt. And just like even today, he see the affliction that we going through over here in the lands of our captivity. And he going to turn it. He said in the angel of his presence, save them. So the angel of his presence, the angels that stand in the presence of the Lord saved him saved Israel. It said in his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But what happened? See, if you reward evil for good, evil will not depart out of your house for the rest of your days. He said, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. So God, he can work with you when you're working with him. Or if you go contrary to him, he will go contrary unto you. And how you going to win a fight against a spiritual being that got all power? It's impossible. So now let's go and look at something else because we just left out of Jeremiah uh, uh, 18, right? So let's go and look at this real quick. I had to get this together. Let's go and look at this. This is a historical and chronological context of the Bible. Let's take a look at what the Lord did because... Uh, Jeremiah was around prophesying during the days of uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and what was going to happen was Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon and the Lord has sent this nation the, the, the Chaldeans or Nebuchadnezzar to go and destroy Israel because they did not do what thus saith the Lord so he stirred up the Chaldeans against them let's take a look at this we're going to read this history book uh, uh, this is concerning what happened to Israel so let's take a look at this. It said after two and a half year siege, after a two and one half year siege with and with famine rampant in the city, the Babylonians breached the walls of Jerusalem. This is around the same time Jeremiah was. This is what Jeremiah was prophesying about. It said on July 15th, 586, the city fell. You can go and read that in Jeremiah 52, 5 through 7 and 2 Chronicles 36, 17 through 21. Although Zedekiah escaped with some of his military attempting to reach sanctuary in Egypt, he was apprehended in the plains of Jericho. However, and brought to Nebuchadnezzar's headquarters on the Orontes River in Syria, showing little mercy, Nebuchadnezzar executed Zedekiah's sons before his eyes and then blinded him. You can go and take a look at this actually happening. So this is just a history book that's giving account of what happened. Let's see what else happened over here. Let's see. We're going to read a little bit. It said on August 15th, 586, the temple was burned and the walls of Jerusalem destroyed. The Lord kept sinning prophets to warn the kings and the people of Jerusalem to turn from their wicked ways. But what did the Lord do? He said, you know what? When you go back and take a look at 2 Chronicles 36, it said the wrath of the Lord arose to there was no remedy. As a matter of fact, hang on, because I want to go and read that. Give me a second while I turn the page over here. Let me back this book up real quick. Let me back this up so we can turn over there. Let's go and look at this. 2 Chronicles 36. He said the wrath of the Lord arose to there was no remedy. Give me one second. 2 Chronicles 36 and... uh. Oh, here we go. Verse 16. You can go and take a look at this. This is in the Bible. Hang on. I want to show you this thing about Nebuchadnezzar too. Because it's all over here. Just go back and read it on your own. You see how I was mentioning Nebuchadnezzar over here? It said Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon. And he put them in his temple at Babylon. Because Judah is going into captivity. Because they were disobedient unto the Lord. Let's see what happened. Verse... Uh, 15. 
It said, no, hang on. Let's look at, uh, oh, watch. Look at this. It says Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. And humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet speaking from the mouth of the Lord. We just got done reading about Jeremiah. And we're going to continue in this reading in a little while. He said, so he didn't humble himself at the voice of God's prophet. And what happened? Destruction came on Jerusalem for that. Sin is the downfall of any nation, people. It said, and he rebelled against, the, against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God, but he stiffened his neck and hardened his heart from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. All this wicked king had to do was just repent. Obey the voice of the Lord. That's all we have to do if we want favor from God. He said, moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hollowed in Jerusalem. They was defiling the temple of the Lord. And the Lord got upset with this. Look at this. It said, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up beat times and sending on numerous occasions because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But what happened? So this is what the Lord does. He warns us a lot of times before he bring drama out. He'll send somebody with a message. And at other times, he'll just go through and destroy that place or whatever is going on if it's just too wicked. So he said, and the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up beat times and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But what did they do? Just like in today's time. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. God was upset. Look at this. He destroyed his house. Where they was worshiping God and he destroyed it. He, he brought it down to the ground. It said, and all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. You see what he did? He took the stuff out of the temple and took it back to Babylon, which is present, uh, present day Iraq. All right. It said, and they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. All right. So when we dealing with this Babylon, we talking about uh, actual land mass. And when we did, when we when we look uh, later on at uh, 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 Revelations 18, we're going to see that it's a system, a government uh, uh, ran by God, uh, uh, not God, by godless people which is ran by Satan. That's what Babylon is. It's a wicked system, but we're going to take a look because it's got the same spirit. So we're going to see this over here. This Babylon is operated by none other than Satan, the devil. So let's take a look at this. It said um, the articles of worship in the temple were taken by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. We just got done reading that. It said the religious leaders were executed Zedekiah and the remaining people were taken to Babylon, leaving the poorest in the land to tend the fields and vineyards. Jeremiah was released from the court prison and left in the care of Gedaliah, whom Nebuchadnezzar appointed as governor over Judah, over Judah. So the Lord will show you mercy and favor when you doing that, which was right, even in our captivity in a land of our oppression. All you got to do is be obedient. Listen to what God is saying. But the point is, God will bring some evil and destruction on a city when it does not obey his voice. Sin is the reproach of any nation. It said in the months after the fall of Jerusalem, Jeremiah wrote his lamentation, meaning it was he was crying. That's what lamentations is. A, 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 a very bitter cry. He was sad for his people. He was crying about the things that he was seeing and experiencing. Just like it's a sad day here in 2023. You see all of this death and destruction, little children getting kidnapped, people getting killed, all kind of stuff. This is a very sad time that we living in. It said Jeremiah wrote Lamentation describing the city as a woman forsaken, weeping 
unable to recover from her disaster. He affirmed that God himself brought the judgment. Remember, we took a look at Jeremiah 9 and 23 through 24. He is a God that execute righteousness and judgment in the earth. So look, let's see. Because you, th these people were sinning against God, he, he tore the nation up. He brought it down. Just like America and the rest of these other nations that's out here doing wickedly, God going to tear it down. It's only a matter of time. He don't change. He going to reset everything. He going to make everything new. These same heavens that's reserved, uh, uh, that was that was flooded out in Noah's day, guess what? It, it, it's reserved unto fire. The Lord going to come back burning this place up. Fire purifies and get rid of the impurities. Let's see. It's going to burn the wicked. It said God himself brought the judgment and that the destruction and the response of a holy God to the sinfulness and rebellion of the city. He lamented his own languish. His, he, re, he lamented his own anguish while remembering God's mercies and faithfulness, as well as the ruthlessness of the enemies of God's people. Wow. Let's see what else it says. It says the agonizing severity of the famine in Jerusalem when she was under siege is reviewed by the prophet in detail. Lamentations four. At the same time, Jeremiah prayed for the day when Jerusalem would be restored and blessing would again be poured out on the land. Lamentations five. So that's what this is about. So the whole thing is we got to leave sin alone. We got to get, we got to stay away from sin. Let's go and look at something else. Let's start, uh, let's start bringing this to an end. Let's go over here to Psalms 107. Psalms 107. And let's see this over here. Psalms 107. So this is why it's important for us to stay away from sin because eventually God going to judge. Remember, he ruled in the kingdom of God and men. Let's see. Uh, let's go to Psalms 107. Let's take a look at verse ah, 31. Let's look at this. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him in all... Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. What does he do, though? He turneth rivers into a wilderness and, and the water springs into dry ground. So the Lord can dry up the rivers. He can dry up the lakes. He can dry up the sea if he wanted to. Ain't nothing too hard for God. We supposed to fear the Lord. We supposed to worship him. It said a fruitful land into barrenness. So a land that was once fruitful, God can make it to where it ain't nothing there but a desert. He said, for the wickedness of them that dwell therein, he can turn it into barrenness for the wickedness that's dwelling in the land. What did he do to the Sodom and Gomorrah? He rained down fire and brimstone from heaven, burnt their whole city up. And not only that city, the city that was surrounding it as well. So God ain't nothing to play with. Let's continue reading. Let's go over here and look at something else. Proverbs 14. This is where the inspiration of the lesson came from. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. And let's have a look at verse 34. What does it say? Righteousness exalted the nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. He says sin is a reproach to any people. Let's go and take a look at what reproach means. Let's go and look at this definition real quick. This is coming from. American Heritage College Dictionary. Let's take a look at this. Reproach. Uh, let's start here. To express. Let me see if. Let me get in this. Because it's not really that clear. Okay. To express disapproval of. Criticism of. Or disappointment in someone. So it's a disappointment when you sinning against God. He's disappointed. We just read early in Psalm 7 and 11. Seeing that he, 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 he's angry with the wicked every day. So let's see what else he said. Uh, uh, to bring shame upon, disgrace, blame, rebuke. One that causes rebuke or blame. Disgrace, shame. So that's what a reproach is. It's a shame when you sin against God. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So not just for the nation of Israel, anybody that's 
practicing sin and things that's contrary to God. It said the king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. God will pour out wrath on the one who is being disobedient. That's why we got to repent. We have to repent. And when we repent, we're going to delight in his grace and his mercy. And we're going to stay away from that stuff that caused us to fall at one point. So now let's go and look at this. Let's go to Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk 2. Let's go over here. Habakkuk 2. And let's take a look at verse 12. We're going to read this one verse. What did he say? Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood. Now, wait a minute. He said, woe to him that buildeth the town with blood. Woe is destruction. Look, look, what is, what is America built up off of? Blood. And I'm saying that because we over here, and I'm sure some of these other countries and nations are established off of the blood of innocent lives that's been shed fighting over this land. But look at what the Bible is saying about these individuals. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood. Establish your city by iniquity. Man, your city is built off of sin. You a sanctuary city for homosexuals and pedophiles and murderers. God going to send some judgment on you. This ain't nothing to play with. Let's go and look at Nahum. Let's go and see what they were doing over there in Nineveh. Look at this. What were they doing? This is why... <laughs> We got to repent, people. Look at this. Woe to the bloody city. This is Nahum. Nahum 3 and 1. He said, woe to the bloody city. Talking about Nineveh. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels. So they got chariots here. And the prancing of horses and of the jumping chariots. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. So they got a sword and a spear in their hand. And so they over here fighting and shedding blood. What are they doing? What else are they doing? And there is a multitude of slain. See, they killing over, over here. See, this is one of the reasons why Jonah didn't want to go and re, uh, 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 preach to these people because he knew what they were doing over there. He knew what was going on. But look, it said in a great number of carcasses, which is dead bodies, and there is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. So it's so many dead people that they tripping over dead bodies in the city over here. That's how wicked it is. It said because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that sell of nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. So they doing all kind of contract things that's contrary to God. Working witchcraft. All kind of evil. It said behold. And that's the spirit of Babylon, too, that they operate in. Verse five. We're going to take a look at that. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. And I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. God said, I'm going to expose you. I'm going to expose everything you doing. He said, and I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile. And will set thee as a gazing stock because they were going contrary to the Lord. God said, I'm going to bring this nation down. He said, and it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? You see what's happening here? Nineveh is wicked. Skip over to 12. He said, all thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. In other words, it's going to be weak. God said, you, you trying to establish your government? You trying to establish your armies? It's going to be weak. Look at what else he's compared it to. He said, if they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. You're going to get consumed because of wickedness. Sin is the downfall of any nation. God will bring it down. So all of the stuff, just pay attention to what's going on around us and always be on alert because you never know when the Lord is going to pour out judgment. But just be aware, be aware of what's going on. That's why we do this Bible program to show you what's happening, because we love we love God and we love the people. We don't want nobody to get smashed up in God's judgment. Just repent right now. You don't want to get caught up in this sin. So let's see. He said, behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. 
The, the gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour their thy bars. So God going to send the destruction over here on Nineveh. He said, let's skip down. Uh, wait, wait, no. Verse 14. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Because they about to get leveled. He said, go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brickling. There shall the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. Man, all of this is happening because of the wickedness in this city. You see why the Lord is bringing destruction on the city? For sin. Let's go and look at something else. One last place. Revelations 18. Let's go and see this whore being judged. And this whore is none other than the Catholic Church. Let's go and take a look at this. And it's the system that is that's operating these governments. Let's take a look. Revelations 18 and 1. Let's look at this. It said, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power er and the earth was lightened with his glory. What is he going to do? And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. So this wicked system that's running the earth right now is going to fall. It's going to collapse. Let's see what else. It said, and it's become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Remember over in Mark 4, when the Lord was talk, giving that parable of the sower and the seeds and the fowls came and uh, uh, ate up the seed. Well, this is Satan. He's that hateful bird. But anyway, it said, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. She was teaching people contrary to what thus said the Lord. When you look at the Catholic churches, um, when you look at the Ten Commandments that they got, they adding and taking away stuff. They doing their own thing. And God is going to judge them as well. He's going to judge these people. Look at this. It said, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. You serving another God. You committing spiritual fornication because it's only one God. But y'all serving other ones, that's considered adultery. He said, and the merchants of the earth are waxed wit rich through the abundance of our delicacies. Okay, so this bad doctrine that they putting out, not only are they destroying people through the bad teachings that they putting out, but they also create holidays around these days that's pagan. They make money off of these days. Go and take a look at Christmas. That's not biblical. It's not biblical to celebrate Christmas. Go and look at Halloween. That's not biblical. Go and look at some of these other holidays that they established as holidays and not holy days. It's contrary to God. And people make money off of this. Go and look at Easter. We Easter, Easter bunnies and painting eggs and all of it. That don't have nothing to do with God. That's pagan. It's going all the way back to Babylon. But anyway, he said, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. In other words, come from out of this world. Come from up out of the Babylonian mindset. Stop being a slave to sin. Come out of her. Why? That ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. Come up out of this worldly way of thinking before God pour out some judgment is what he's letting us know. Why? For her sins have reached unto heaven and God have remembered her iniquities. God got a set time when he going to judge the world. He said he remembered her iniquities. Reward unto her or reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. So all of that wickedness she putting out, double it up to her. God going to lay it on thick. It said in the cup which she had filled, filled to her double. All of the bloodshed that they've been shedding, all of the martyrs, all of the people that they didn't martyr, martyred for, for Jesus. Oh, man. They martyred people that was believing in Jesus. They got to pay for that. They did a lot of things. They put out a lot of lies in the name of Jesus. Let's see. It said how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow. Give her. God going to lay it on 
thick when he pour out judgment on the Babylon. He said, for she saith in her heart, I said a queen and I'm no widow and she shall see no sorrow. So she arrogant and proud. You know, you even got the one that's sitting over there that's uh, running the Vatican. He's saying that he the replacement of Christ. How blasphemous is that? Let's see. The Lord going to smash this place. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. God is going to judge this great whore. He going to judge Babylon. He going to judge the Catholic Church. As a matter of fact, he going to judge everybody that's doing wickedly. That's why we got to come up out of that way of thinking. We got to repent and turn back to the Lord. That's the message. So I never ever want to come off as holier than thou or anything like that. But the scriptures did say, be ye holy, Father, Lord, your God, am holy. And, you know, uh, it's only a matter of time, you know, before uh, YouTube really catches up because that's all we do is put out the truth on this channel. You know, it's only a matter of time. So messages like this, I, I don't know what they're going to do. They might try to uh, uh, start banning these type of videos. But while we got the floor, we're going to let people know what thus said the Lord. And I'm not afraid to let nobody know about what God said, because this right here is just, just the truth. As a matter of fact, I didn't already made it up in, up in my mind that one day I might have to give up my life for what I believe. I don't know what I don't know what the future holds, but just in case, you know, this is what I'm standing on right here. The true word of God, because God got the power to raise up the dead. So can they really kill us? Yeah, they could put us to death, but they can't destroy us. God, Jesus Christ is the only one that can do that. So in the meantime, we're going to continue bringing out this word and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. God going to incinerate that place. He says, standing the fall for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, the mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. God got a time when he going to deal with every nation that was going contrary unto him. And especially this Babylon, which is going to be the last one to fall. So with that being said, I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for the viewers and listeners that tune in to this bread, wine and soul food channel. I pray that the Lord forgive us for our sins. I pray that he look down from heaven and have mercy upon us. May he remove the spirit of sickness, disease. And everything that we call upon him for, may he answer us if it be according to his will. So with that being said, may the spirit of God rest upon each and every one of us. May he give us a heart that's going to serve him perfectly according to his will all of the days of our life. May when we go before him in prayer, may he put the words in our mouths that we should be asking him about. May he put the words in our mouths on, on what to request from him. So with that being said. I love you all so much. Peace in Jesus name.